Hello, welcome to my sp speech about um, uh, young minds and future minds. My name is Rubek Kopetsky. I'm from the Karol Chopek Center for Values in Science and Technology based in Prague. Actually, Czechia is uh, the cradle uh, of the world robot and also the institution I'm affiliated with. Uh, it's uh, the alma mater of uh, uh, Karol Chopek brother, Josef, who was artist and uh, who actually made up the, the word robot. My talk is about uh, two concepts, uh, the young Nibali and about ascription of um, types of attributes to robots all by children. Okay, uh, the general scheme of the talk is the classical one from aim of study methods results leading to uh, the discussion. The motivation is very simple that uh, in the uh, uh, coming future, we will be interacting with technology uh, quite intimately. Here, uh, this is a picture from German newspaper showing the refugee children uh, studying German from, from the robot. And, uh, uh, the concept of Anke Nivoli was uh, firstly described by uh, uh, Charles Darwin as many of uh, the good ideas in, in science and biology in general. Uh, the Anke Nivoli describes uh, this chart. Uh, on the x-axis, uh, you can see the familiarity or, or closeness to the human face, uh, going from something very simple like industrial robot uh, on the left side uh, to the right uh, to the complete human face. On the y-axis, uh, you can see uh, how people feel towards uh, that uh, uh, being or machine. And uh, we can see uh, on the chart uh, the dotted line that uh, more uh, similar to the uh, real healthy person the robot machine is. Uh, we tend to uh, feel more positive about it. However, there is a, a volley. Uh, that uh, if something is uh, quite similar, but not yet completely human, uh, it gives us um, a strange, uncanny feeling, uh, as Charles Darwin described it on uh, bad faces or snake faces, that it's uh, very similar to human, but it's uh, uh, quite ugly. Uh, you can see another example from uh, the digitally made movie, The Polar Express, or uh, the recent one, uh, The Cats, where uh, the characters were very close to human, but still look a little bit creepy. Uh, the idea is uh, described in literature uh, in multiple ways. Uh, firstly, the mm, interpretation of the effects could be something very biological, like uh, if there are some aberrant uh, facial expression, some features, uh, it shows uh, that uh, it's something is wrong with the bearer of the face, that uh, uh, he or she could be ill uh, with some parasites, and these abnormal uh, features are uh, deemed to as an ugly. Uh, also, also, there is a more methodological problem uh, when studying these effects. As on the last slide, uh, we saw different graphical styles. And if you compare uh, these images, let's say how, how nice it looks like, or would you be friend with that uh, being robot or person, uh, you're not only uh, judging uh, the expression, the familiarity to the human, but a graphical style. Uh, one of the way how to eliminate this, uh, this mistake uh, could be uh, create uh, uh, the spectrum by morphing images. On one hand, you can have a robot. On the other hand, you can have a human face and create five images in between. But as the uh, as the Finnish team show, showed up in their study from 2018, uh, that uh, photorealistic images are usually um, evaluated as nicer than the morphed images, than the created images. Uh, so we try to solve this problem by creating original, newly designed uh, set of stimuli. Uh, 
Um, the second part of study is about uh, mental states uh, of robots. Um, usually, uh, usually philosophers, when they are talking about mental states of machines, uh, they tend to um, use uh, the differences that are uh, in, in philosophy, philosophical literature. However, uh, lay people usually do not follow these uh, nuanced and highly sophisticated theories. So uh, of, uh, in the last 10 years, uh, what was found uh, in the experiments with lay people, that uh, usually people uh, do tend to ascribe some uh, uh, some mental states uh, to uh, to the machines. And how, uh, for example, uh, uh, study from Sistema and Machiri from 2010 showed that uh, uh, the philosophical distinction between intentional and phenomenal states isn't the case in the layman. Uh, instead, the people uh, tend to uh, ascribe um, uh, uh, hedonic value uh, only to humans, but not to robots. What does it mean? That uh, people can smell banana and robots can smell specific chemicals. Uh, and also, uh, and also uh, we can, we can uh, look uh, on, at some um, behavior experiments. For example, uh, when people chat with some uh, bot online, uh, they tend to not to uh, destroy that program. They, they form some relationship. And even if their uh, participants had been paid, uh, for example, for destroying some uh, robot bugs, they still ascribe some moral balance to that being. So uh, they refuse to do it. Uh, uh, what we can see that uh, uh, we tend to uh, conceptualize these uh, mechanical beings as as as, uh, uh, as a human like, and uh, based on our research, I will uh, show uh, show how. So methods. Uh, our participants were uh, two hundred and nine uh, children around eleven years old. It was done in person uh, two years ago. Uh, we created uh, six robot faces that uh, children evaluated, and then uh, uh, we created thought experiments uh, with dog, human, mathematical bot. Uh, it was robot one for this uh, this presentation. I name it as a mat bot, as a mathematical bot. Second one was the same robot. Uh, 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 robot 2, but in this presentation I will refer to it as an android. What is the difference between them? Madbot or Robot 1 was um, uh, capable of um, uh, moving objects, not to uh, navigate around them and solve complicated mathematical problems and talk about it, but it was limited to that. The second robot, Android, was the same, plus it would basically pass the Turing test. So it was uh, capable uh, of um, discussing about everything. Uh, and the dog was training example and human. So how the uh, experiment worked. First, uh, children were presented by six created uh, faces uh, on spectrum from non-human to human. This is our uh, sketches from my student. Uh, they created these lines, and from uh, six or seven lines, we chose one. This is uh, the first one. Uh, on the left side, you can see the most robotic face. On the right side, you can see the most uh, human face. Then in pseudo-random order, it was presented to the children, and the question was, how much uh, uh, would you be friend with this robot or how much you like him or her in this example? Uh, and they evaluated on the Likert scale from zero uh, to five. And we have three hypotheses. First, that Ankeny will appear. Second, that Android compared to mathematical bot will have more ascribed attributes. And the third hypothesis, that perceived friendliness of robots will correlate with a higher attribution of attributes. 
So what uh, was uh, the question? There were six questions on every uh, every uh, being, human, dog, robot one and robot two. First question was about uh, perception. Does it see or hear? Second question was about thinking. Does it think? Uh, f f f number three was, uh, can it feel uh, happy, sad or other emotion? Fourth question was about um, um, about conception of self. Does it know about uh, himself, itself, that it's dog or robot or human? Uh, fifth question was, is it alive? Six, and does it have a soul? And last one, can it decide uh, for itself what to do? You can see this is very simple because the children were quite young uh, and uh, you cannot use uh, nuanced, sophisticated philosophical question. It has to be short because of the attention span, uh, the vocabulary that children are using. But you can see there are some categories that we are trying to uh, get with these type of questions. So results. Uh, you can see six, uh, six uh, faces of robots that was designed by one student uh, intentionally as a spectrum. Uh, and uh, on the chart, Okay, sorry. <laughs> and on the chart, uh, you can see uh, how familiar uh, children are with it. Uh, so the most uh, positive, uh, it's uh, uh, number four, it goes up. The more, uh, more robot resemble human, uh, children are usually uh, feels positive about it. And then it goes down. Here is the uncannibally. Uh, the number five, this this robot that it's it's human but not absolutely. Uh, so this was the hypothesis one, and then then this complicated uh, complicated uh, image. Actually, uh, the question about uh, ch um, a human is not there because children usually say yes, a human can hear, think, be happy, alive. Uh, human has a soul and it's free. So, so usually uh, on scale from zero to five, most children, like all of them, give five. Uh, so, uh, every category has a specific color. Uh, you can see, let's say, uh, the blue one is a perception, seeing and hearing. D means dog. M is mathematical robot and A is Android. You can see that uh, children are fine to ascribe perception to machines and to, to animals. Uh, thinking is uh, also there that uh, uh, in these categories, children tend to see technology um, uh, functional. Same way like uh, birds fly, planes do fly as well, but in different way, but still it's functional. However, uh, there are uh, two or three categories like being alive and having a soul that uh, children are essentialist. So dogs are alive, have a soul, but not machines. Even, even if the machine uh, can think more than dog and even the, the machine uh, has a similar self-perception and, uh, and the capability of being happy. So now we can compare mathematical robot and the, and, and the Android. As, as uh, said uh, previously, these robots are the same. Mm, they can navigate in space, they can manipulate with objects, they can calculate, they can talk about it, plus the Android can talk about uh, everything else, not only mathematics. Uh, in blue, you can see that um, their seeing and hearing is the same. Uh, thinking is higher with Android. Okay, but uh, the being uh, capable of uh, emotions, like being happy, uh, children are fine to say that robot can be happy, uh, artificial intelligence can be happy, uh, but uh, only the one that uh, it's uh, uh, that would pass during tests. Um, and also they have some self-awareness like uh, uh, on the dog level. Uh, that's strange that we found that being alive and having a soul uh, is uh, the same thing. Actually, the, the correlation is like 0.95 or it's the same 
practically. Uh, and uh, it's not a religious concept. It's like a method of um, uh, the idiom in, in language, like uh, having a small uh, soul means that you are afraid. Um, or uh, in this concept, uh, children tend to use it the soul uh, interchangeably with being alive, and also uh, children do think that uh, robots can be can be uh, can be free. So what we found out that uh, just to uh, sum up my speech that uh, uncanny volley, if if it's done properly, so the images is from one designer in one same scheme. They are not computer generated. They are drawn as a finished product. There is uh, uncanny volley. Uh, we found it uh, with uh, with children uh, on on um, as you see on the chart. And uh, what we found out uh, about um, uh, about robots and their differences. The children are essentialist in the category of being alive and having a soul but they are completely fine to ascribe functionalist state of cognition, perception, self-awareness, and uh, having emotion, even to machines. And what is the key role as, uh, is, that, uh, is the verbal ability of that robot. So that's it. Uh, thanks uh, to the technological agency for supporting this work. It's the preliminary work that we are doing uh, for human machine interaction. Um, the applying, applying of this project uh, will be for uh, public transport and uh, for the everyday machines, autonomous cars and, and etc. cetera. Uh, there is uh, my email, you can uh, send me uh, a question. I would like to also uh, thank to my collaborator, mainly Michaela Koshova. And that's all. So I'm looking very much for uh, the discussion.